mainly what we're going to be talking about is employee productivity and about one of the things that actually is a huge drain on employee productivity, which is uh, finding information people need to do their jobs. And really that's what search, the purpose of search, is to help address that so that people can really do the more productive work that, um, that we all want to do and do the more creative work that we all want to do. So my name is Paul Bloom. I'm a program manager uh, in the Microsoft AI and R division, um, which is uh, Bing. I, I work in Bing, which is a part of that. Um, and I'm my colleague. I'm Sharon Reed. I'm a PM in Microsoft Search, bringing Bing tech to Microsoft Search. Yep. So from an agenda standpoint, we've got about an hour. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just setting context and uh, some of the challenges that we see at a pretty high level in terms of information overload and the ability for, uh, uh, the ability for employees to, to find information to do their jobs. I'll talk about Microsoft Search itself. Uh, Karen will then go through a demo and, and show the product in action. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the roadmap, uh, what is available now, what's coming in the short term, what's coming in a, a, a little bit longer, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. So with that said, we'll get started. Um, I've got a slide here on Microsoft 365. I'm not going to spend much time on it because I'm going to assume that if you're at Microsoft Ignite, you haven't been able to escape uh, hearing about Microsoft 365. Um, so you know, just to kind of reiterate the points that I'm sure you've heard is Microsoft 365 is a complete, intelligent, and secure uh, solution that includes Office 365, Windows 10, as well as enterprise mobility and security with the, the benefits to businesses and users to unlock creativity, enabling uh, employees to collaborate and work as teams, bringing a high level of security, and also integrating all this for simplicity. Um, you know, those are the basics of Microsoft 365. And when you think about it, you know, search and the ability to find information is pretty, it, it, I think of it as more of like an underlying foundational capability that goes across all of this. Because a user can't really be creative if they're spending hours a day looking for that file that they were building. And a user and teams can't work together if Karen and I are trying to figure out where is the last version of that, uh, that PowerPoint deck that we were working on, right? And so the less time that users spend looking and the more time they can spend collaborating and creating. And of course, it's important that we do it. Um, you know, whatever the capability is, it needs to be done in, uh, with a high level of security and privacy. The challenge of making time to actually do work is getting worse. I am always, I've, I've shown this many, many times. I'm always amazed when I see the data on this slide. And I've got a quick question for everyone. Um, when you think about working over the last month, how many, put your hand up if you've always been able to find the exact information you need right away without searching around or asking someone or browsing multiple. Hands up if, you've been, if it's easy for you to do that. So it's easy. Yeah? It's, 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 it's not always instant. It's easy but not instant. OK, right. So you, it doesn't happen on the first time. <laughs> Okay, um, I fall into that boat as well, and you can see this data um, that managers uh, say on a daily basis they're missing information they need to do their jobs. Almost 60% of managers say that, and the one that really strikes me is this 20% number. That 20% of information workers, or sorry, information workers on average spend 20% of their time looking for information. That's one day a week. One day a week. People are just spending looking for information rather than collaborating, rather than being creative, rather than being productive. And so really what we're trying to do um, you know, overall with Microsoft, Search and, with Microsoft Search is help give some of that time back to those individuals, help give some of that time back to organizations so that, you, that your employees can be more productive. And the thing is, the problem's just getting worse because you can, the scale of content that's being created, um, 44 zettabytes of data by 2020, and making it even more challenging to actually find information you're looking for is that more than 75%, more than three quarters of it, is unstructured data. 
which makes it you know, super challenging uh, when you're looking for a particular document or a particular answer or a particular piece of information. So companies, including Microsoft, are investing huge amounts of money in trying to solve this problem um, in a scalable way uh, through cognitive services, AI, machine learning. Um, Microsoft is uh, Microsoft's basically a leader in this area. We've been investing in these types of things for decades. And, um, and now, with it are particularly at, with the just amount of data being created, uh, we're able to uh, leverage those investments uh, in, in one of many ways is through making search better. However, um, enterprise search today, uh, I'd say, is not very good for the most part. Um, I, the, the, my role, my primary role within the Bing uh, and search organization is talking to customers, enterprise customers, um, about Microsoft Search and really understanding what their challenges are, what their pain points are. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, living in the Bing organization, and, you know, I, I would say for most of you, when you're looking for something on the web, the first place you go is likely a search engine. Right? Even if you're doing a navigational search, many people just go to the search engine, they type it, and they get where they're going. That's not the case within your organizations. In fact, when I talk to, you know, often what I hear from people is, first they'll browse to find the information they need, then they'll ask someone, oh, <coughs> sorry, I didn't mean to push that. Um, then they'll ask someone, and then they'll try search. Um, it's completely opposite from the web. And so, and part of the reason for that is it's very hard, like people aren't in your, in your organization, your enterprise, you know, in the web, there's a whole industry around SEO to make web pages discoverable. When you create a document or your people, in your, do you think about making that document discoverable? Probably not. And so there's a bunch of challenges with enterprise, there's less signal, but one of the big challenges too is that we have content stored all over the place. And you know, being a Microsoft employee, I would love it if all your content Everything was in Microsoft 365, but I know that's not the case for most organizations. There's, you know, you have you have file shares from you know ages ago. You have uh, other third-party uh, SaaS providers. You have content all over the place, right? And so, and and what's happened then is that um, each of these different workloads or apps or services have essentially built their own search. And so, if you're looking for something, and that's even true in, within Microsoft within the Microsoft ecosystem. You want to search for a conversation in Teams, you go to Teams. You want to search for something in Yammer, you go to Yammer. You want to search for a document, you go to SharePoint. Um, you want to find something on your hard drive, you go to Windows, right? And so the first decision that people need to make when they're looking for something is where do I search? And then when they, they figure out where they're gonna search, they'll do it, and then they might have to switch context. Oh, it's not there, I'm gonna to try to search here. They get partial results. The UX is different, the user experience, the results are shown differently, you know, the language I have to use is different. So it's very confusing and just a big time waste. And then lastly, all of us do web search and all of us know how good search can be and we expect that it's gonna be the same within our organizations. And so we don't wanna to have to um, enter the exact keyword. We don't wanna um, have to sort through a whole bunch of links. We just want you, the search engine to understand my intent, what I'm looking for. And then if it's possible, just give me the answer. Don't make me click on a bunch of links. Just tell me the information I need to know. And so that's the context that we're living in right now. And of course, we're, you know, based on what we've heard and what, and what we experience, even within Microsoft, I mean, I'll, as an aside, we work very closely with MS IT department. I can tell you that, you know, finding information within Microsoft is one of the most challenging things that they, that, that they do. It's one of the, you know, in surveys and so on, it always comes in towards the bottom. It's just a really, really hard problem. And so what we want and what users want is the ability to do one query and search across everything in my enterprise. Don't make me go back and forth to all, you know, different search engines. Number two, we want the experience to be more consistent, have a coherent kind of design and user interface. Right, and let me search wherever I am. Let me, you know, there may, most companies and organizations have an intranet, a homepage, and they have a standard place where intranet, where they want people to do intranet search and where most intranet, uh, internal search happens. That's great. Um, however, you know, sometimes it's just better to be able to search 
in the context of your workflow without having to switch back and forth all the time. Um, I keep hitting this button. Um, so anyway, that leads me into, uh, into Microsoft Search. Uh, and the goal of that really is to address some of these issues and give employees some of their time back. So it's been a, it's been a pretty long journey for Microsoft um, in, in terms of getting to where we are today with Microsoft Search. For those of you who have been working with SharePoint for a while, you know, back in 2008, we, made, uh, uh, we acquired Fast um, to really help you know, increase, improve search with SharePoint. Um, and then really over many years, we've invested in what is now called the Microsoft Graph, which, you know, which understands the connections between peep employees, between people and other entities within their organization, uh, which allows more personalization. And then in 2014, Sorry in, 20, sorry, in 2014, the first app was built on the graph to help surface relevant documents and people and meetings and so on that were relevant to you as an individual based on your connections within the organization. In 2017, we announced and we, we, uh, we did the private preview and then after that, the public preview of a product that was initially called Bing for Business and now is part of Microsoft Search. So it's Microsoft Search and Bing. And this brought enterprise results to when you're doing a web query, it also showed you internal results from your organization. And it started bringing some of the, the technology that Bing has been investing in for 10 years um, and enables it to do uh, you know, search at scale over billions and billions of web pages and understand intent and bring that into a compliant enterprise stack so that enterprise users could start benefiting from some of those natural language capabilities from some of that uh, machine reading comprehension and other um, AI capabilities. And then in 2018, uh, we announced personalized search in office.com, which also leveraged the graph. So it, it, the results could be more personalized. And all of this really is bringing together these various investments, sometimes separate investments together in, um, into Microsoft Search. Now, I just want to spend a second uh, talking about the graph. Um, because it's a word that's kind of thrown around a lot. And you know, one of the unique things about Microsoft is that there is, you know, for, for Office 365 customers, there is the Office graph or the Microsoft graph, which you know, within your tenant really builds, um, understands the connections and the interactions between individuals in your organization as well as other entities, which allows to personalize information within your organization. On the web side in Bing, we've built a massive knowledge, uh, knowledge graph about information and entities, people, places, and things outside of the organization. And it's through that learning and that knowledge graph, we can bring that into your enterprise search. So you can benefit from those years of learning that we've had on web search. And for things that may seem fairly simple, but like understanding the relationship between uh, Something as simple as that a dog is a, is a pet. And you know, one of the demos, some new technology we're working on, we often show asking a question, can I bring my dog to work? And um, Microsoft, in all of its documents, doesn't have any dog policy about whether you can bring your dog to work, but it has a pet policy. And so through this, you know, this, this knowledge graph we have, the system is able to understand that a dog is a type of pet and the pet policy is actually relevant. And, and it will give me a relevant answer to what I'm looking for. And that's just one example of the kind of real world knowledge that we're able to bring into enterprise search. So can you bring your dog to work? Um, you can if it's, uh, if it's like a guide dog or if so it's, it's if, not a pet. Pardon me? So then it's not a pet. When it's not a pet, you can. Is, you cannot bring a pet to work. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Asking the important question. Yes, no, you cannot bring a, a pet to work. Um, so what's Microsoft Search? Microsoft Search is basically us bringing together these various technologies, bringing together our web technology and office uh, search technology and the Microsoft Graph into one underlying search capability that's available across Microsoft 365, okay? And it means a few things. And you can see this, the search glass here with a bunch of, uh, of the icons for different um, applications and services within Microsoft 365. And they actually represent two things. 
One is they represent the types of information and content stores that, that with Microsoft Search you'll be able to search across, right? So with one query searching across all this content. They also represent entry points to search. So if I'm working in PowerPoint and I want to do a query, then I can just do that query right in PowerPoint and I'll be able to search not just within PowerPoint, but across all the information in my organization. Okay, now the results will be contextual because if I'm in PowerPoint, then it's more than likely that I'll want the results to um, kind of give increased weight to PowerPoint presentations as opposed to emails. But I'll be able to search over everything, right? I can go up a level, or I, you know, I, I can search everything. I don't have to then move over to Outlook to search for that email, or I don't have to move over to, um, you know, to Teams to look for that Teams conversation. So that's the promise. That's what we're working towards, and it will all be sitting on top of this core uh, technology platform of Bing Technology and the graph. <laughs> and so there's basically three pillars to uh, you know, how we think about Microsoft Search and what it can deliver. One is that it's insightful, and by that we, we basically mean it's intelligent, it's smart, it gives you an answer instead of a bunch of results when it can, it understands your network, Okay, it understands your intent, right? So you don't have to type the exact keyword every time, right? But you can type something similar or, you know, and that it will just understand what it is you're looking for. Number two is boundaryless. And there's a few dimensions to this. One is, as I've talked about, the ability to search across all enterprise content. Initially in Microsoft 365, um, and, we announced, uh, and we announced back at Ignite um, in September, and uh, that we will have connector, uh, connectors available as well. And so there'll be connectors which will allow you then to search over, um, you know, not just Microsoft 365 content, but you know, any content that you may have through third-party SaaS providers, line of business apps, um, internal file shares, and so on. Um, so that's one, the content. Number two is the entry points where you can search. And then the third one is really any device. And as Karen is gonna show you that you know, if you want to search from your mobile device using uh, a Chrome browser on your, on, your, you know, on your iPhone, it's great. You can do that. You want to search on a, you know, a PC using Edge, you can do that, and everything in between. You can search basically from anywhere. <laughs> and then lastly is trustworthy. Um, everything we built with, is with you know, the, the highest standards of security. Uh, where you as the owners of the tenant, it's your information, it's your content, we can't see it, okay? And also giving individuals the tools they can, they can use to restrict how much of that information is, is, is providing signals into the graph. Um, privacy, uh, you know, everything we do is GDPR compliant um, and, uh, and tier C compliant. And I know that in the case of certainly Microsoft Search and Bing, we're working towards tier D compliance as well. So, with that said, um, that's the overview of Microsoft Search. I'm going to hand things over to Karen to take all this slide work and make it real. Um, awesome. Show you. Thanks, Paul. We're going to kick off uh, the demo with a one minute video on Microsoft Search.
Cool. So um, what's great about Microsoft Search, as Paul mentioned, is that you can start your search from anywhere within Microsoft 365. So be it Teams, OneNote, uh, PowerPoint, Bing, Yammer, SharePoint, et cetera. Um, you can start your search there. Today, I, in the demo, I'm going to demo from Bing.com. So just take note that I am logged in via my AAD account on Bing.com. So we all know that Bing is great at delivering intelligent answers on the web, but what about finding internal tools, resources, and documents? It's not easy, is it? So for example, do you even know where that tool is where you can book travel or check your vacation balance? Um, you see, with Microsoft Search, we uncover those important links and those valu that valuable content that enterprises and employees are looking for every day. So I'll give you a couple examples. This first one is booking travel. Um, so when I started uh, planning my trip to Amsterdam here, I knew I needed to book some travel and you know, Microsoft Search just made this super easy for me. All I needed to do was query book travel. And what you see surfacing here is an enterprise bookmark that Microsoft has. Um, so I could simply accomplish my task by clicking on this bookmark, plain and simple. And then I did have some questions about, you know, are there any policies around international travel? Um, so instead of like digging it into HR web or some travel uh, website, I was able to simply bing travel policy and boom, I got a travel policy guide right at my fingertips um, that I could browse through and um, answer questions that I had. Something else I was planning to do uh, is hand out business cards um, here at Ignite Amsterdam. Um, and really, I've been at Microsoft for, for 14 years and I really don't know where to get business cards. So I simply went to search and the power of Microsoft Search made this possible. So I got my business cards through Microsoft Print Services. Who knew? One other uh, example of that I wanted to show you here is finding your vacation balance. So this card here is powered by a Power App. Um, in the old solution that we have to find your vacation balance, it's actually shown in hours. So if you want to calculate the days, you have to do the math. <laughs> um, what's awesome about this Power App is I can see how many hours, or sorry, days that I have to spend on vacation. And I can also log my vacation when I take it here right in the app. But I'm not going to do it now because it would actually deduct. Um, <laughs> Another query that I think does a great job demonstrating the power of both work and web results is childcare, something that all enterprise um, employees are going to want to know more information about. Um, so for me, um, when I'm in a bind and I need childcare, I was delighted to see when Microsoft Search finally released this bookmark. Um, in the old days, it was in HR web, and it took me sometimes 10 minutes plus to find this link and then book through um, the, um, the benefits that Microsoft offers for childcare. And the other part that you'll see here is that there are also some very valuable local web results that you'll see. So this is um, not just internal results, but also rich web results from Bing.com. Now into personalized results. So the, as Paul mentioned, the Microsoft Graph thinks about signals and entities that you work with in every day to deliver personalized search results. So in this case, um, Paul and I, we were colleagues and we work on several documents together. And the power of the graph plus Bing Tech will show that when I type in P here, it will rank Paul Bloom, my colleague, as number one in auto-suggest, which is awesome for me um, because I could simply click on Paul and this is now displaying his people card. So you see information about, about Paul, his organization, his calendar today, and oh, back to that, that deck that I was looking for, there it is, the um, Microsoft Search Bing Shiproom deck. Super easy to find um, in, in one search. I don't have to dig through email or anything else like that. Um, and you'll also see here's his organization, groups that he's a part of, his, his office location, and then directions to that office if you're not in the building and don't know where that is. 
So super, super helpful. Another example of the intelligence that's brought into Microsoft Search are nicknames. So I work with a woman um, whose name is Roseanne, and we all call her Rosie. She signs her emails Rosie, uh, but nowhere in the AAD profile lives the name Rosie. So again, this is the power of the Bing tech plus the graph together, that when I type in Rosie, uh, the very first thing r ranked here in the auto suggest for people is Roseanne, who I work with. This is even ranked above people whose name is actually Rosie. So let's say I was just trying to find Rosie. Um, it would probably take me hours to find her if I only knew her by Rosie. And maybe worse, I'd think she'd left the company because I couldn't find her. So this is just um, super helpful and really makes me feel like Bing understands me and knows my everyday work. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the power of pulling a single query and then seeing results across your entire organization, all Bing Ignite. So here, um, this is the main bookmark for Ignite, so you can learn about the tour and everything else there. But what else is cool is if you click on all results, you can see the, uh, the main bookmark, groups, files, populate, sites, Yammer and more um, for Ignite alone. So this is really demonstrating the power across the entire organization for all enterprises. Speaking of saving time, um, you can get an answer to a question if you just type it into search. So like as Paul mentioned, can you imagine um, like typing in weather in Amsterdam and having to like click, click, click to see what the forecast is? Um, no, instead you can just ask a question in search. For example, how do I reset my password? And I have two very quick, clear instructions on how to do that. And I can also click on this link if I want to learn more on how to reset my password. Next, um, we do get feedback from people that they would prefer to use Chrome and get these kinds of results. So we've built a Chrome extension I installed it here, it's in the upper right-hand corner of my browser, and click on it here, and I will bing my name, Karen Reed, and you'll see my people card and all the information that you saw also um, in Paul's, my organization, my groups, my office location, and more. So next up, mobile. You can see the same experience um, that you're seeing here on the go. So if you're on your, your way to a meeting, if you're in the meeting and you're wondering who is that across from me, I'm gonna type in Rosie. <laughs> um, you can uh, see more information. We don't have your screen. It's coming. Okay, cool. So, right, so I can look at, here's my office location, scroll up, same thing. Um, more information about me, my contact information, my calendar, and so on. Cool. Um, so just in conclusion, I wanted to share some words that our customers use to describe Microsoft Search. Um, they use efficient, organized, powerful, um, productive and smart. And so I hope that um, I've given you some uh, good background and some good examples of what Microsoft Search can do for you to save you time and also help you find what you're looking for. Because ultimately our goal is to make enterprise search as easy as web search. So I'm going to hand it back over to Paul. He's going to talk about our next steps. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Um, can you get back to the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. So one thing I realize I haven't mentioned yet, um, and probably a lot of you are wondering, is how much does this cost? Um, and so basically all the features, with one exception, that Karen showed you is part, I mean, you're, it's part of your Office 365 subscription, E1, E3, E5, same with education SKUs. So there's not an, any additional cost uh, to use those. The one um, thing that we haven't released yet Everything she, she showed you also is available now, um, and uh, th with one exception, which is the floor plans, like showing where your office location is. 
Um, you know, there will be some, likely be some premium features down the road, and we're still figuring out what those are and kind of what the business model would be. But what you saw today uh, with the, you know, is basically, with the exception of floor plans, is available and is, um, you know, you could start using it, uh, you could start using it today. So, you know, one of the things that I've painted this picture, a uh, great picture of how you're going to be able to search from ev for everything, from everywhere, and it's going to be highly relevant and personalized. Um, and, you know, that is the value prop of Microsoft Search. Um, it's, not, it's not one of these things where we're going to flip a switch on day one and then all of a sudden that's just true. It is, uh, it's a, a process of bringing these different capabilities to the different um, entry points and also bringing those different entry points online. So it'll be the kind of thing where you see new capabilities continue to roll out. Um, they may uh, be available in Bing in some cases before in SharePoint, and some things might be available in SharePoint before they come to Team Search and so on. Um, and so I want to share with you what's available today, um, what's coming soon, like in the next, uh, next few months, and then also um, what's coming a little bit further down, uh, a little bit further down the road. So right now, I think I'd mentioned that um, the Microsoft search in Bing, uh, and so just from a nomenclature standpoint, you may hear me or others say Microsoft search in Bing, Microsoft search in SharePoint, Microsoft search in office.com. It's basically referring to the different entry points um, where people can do their searches. So um, the public preview uh, we announced um, in late September, we're still, it's still running. Um, anyone um, with a tenant in a list of countries that I'll show you at the very end uh, can just go to the, your Office 365 admin center, uh, go down to services. Uh, you'll see Microsoft Search. You can just turn it on, flick it on, and it'll be on for your organization. And then you can do some configuration, create bookmarks, uh, Q&As, building locations. Um, you can put your logo in there so your logo will show and everything. But, um, you know, basically the public preview is... You know, brings your organizational uh, results in a highly secure, Tier C compliant way, uh, together with web results. It, um, you, as Karen showed, you can use it from any device, any browser. Um, it includes probably the most extensive, uh, right now, the most extensive set of, uh, of results that you can, that, you know, it's most emblematic of what Microsoft Search um, is bringing to people because it includes, um, you know, bookmarks and Q&As, uh, with embedded power apps. It includes uh, SharePoint sites, SharePoint files, uh, modern groups, and, um, and I guess more classic groups, um, people search, conversations in Teams, conversations in Yammer, uh, building locations, and of course, web results. So all that with one, uh, with one query. And it also is the place where you're most likely to see most of the new innovation will likely come uh, to Bing first, or much of it will come to Bing first. And, uh, that's really for two reasons. One is um, Bing having just lived in the cloud for a long, like we're, we're, we release dozens of times a day features, like just like a constant release cycle. Um, and, you know, some of the other parts of Microsoft um, aren't on quite that pace of release. But also because a lot of the new innovation, a lot of the technology um, is bringing um, technology and capabilities from our web stack, like consumer stack, over into our compliant enterprise stack. And so it's just easier to light it up first in, in Bing and then migrate it out to the other, uh, the other entry points in other parts of, of Office, uh, sorry, of Microsoft 365. Uh, in office.com, I believe now uh, com it's complete. I heard that that is um, on office.com. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the interesting things about Office, uh, search in Office, is that we realized that we've made it kind of hard to find search. Like, where is the search box? And so um, one of the things we're doing is we're moving the search box into a highly prominent place on all on office.com and on all the web, uh, office web applications. So if you want to search, you just go to the top there and you just search. And, you know, and because you're in the context of office here, the kinds of things that you're going to see are going to be a little bit different than if you're searching from Bing. For example, it's, it, you can see here it's surfacing some of the office apps, which you may be, you may be looking for. Um, the, just the page itself, uh, the default page, or we call the zero query, when you haven't typed anything, it's showing documents that you've worked on or that you may want to look, you know, you may be, uh, that you may want to just pick up where you left off and continue working. Um, and, you know, and so it's, it's more, um, yeah, it's more, it's really contextualized to 
kind of where you're doing your search to be focused on, on the broad set of office capabilities. Um, the start page in Office uh, online apps, I've referred to this before, with the search box moving up to the top and then again leveraging the graph. And you can see here it's, um, you know, it's bringing up Word documents as well as people and, uh, and, um, and SharePoint sites and so on, bringing these different pieces, parts of Office 365 content together in one query. Uh, the SharePoint mobile app, we, we did a uh, pretty significant update to that a few months ago. Um, it also made search a prominent part of the experience. You know, right at the beginning, you can see it here, um, that the different types of content that you can now get through, uh, through SharePoint search, and more will be coming. And some pretty significant improvements to search in Outlook. Um, it, a lot of investment in intent understanding to really, you know, to you know, make it less keyword, just specific, less, uh, rel less reliant on just very specific keyword matching, and really to understand the intent behind your query, um, the ability to search beyond email, to include calendar and people and attachments and links, um, and also to have that, that zero query, pay, you know, uh, experience where you just click on the search box and it's going to show you. Um, uh, results that it thinks are most relevant to you um, in that context. So now I'm going to turn to some of the, the capabilities that are coming soon. I'm going to first talk about some of the new endpoints that are coming online and then some of the, um, the kind of fun, more fundamental capabilities. Um, so the, you know, providing this same experience of searching uh, within the Office apps, like the actual, like the um, you know, the, the desktop applications themselves. Um, and again, moving the header into that more prominent place and then enabling them to, you know, leverage the graph and search across more entity types. Um, you know, here's an example of, of a query you can see in PowerPoint. And it's bringing up because, you know, searching for El Nino, it's looking, you know, it brings up that PowerPoint uh, presentation first, understanding that that's the context that I'm in. But it's also surfacing two Word documents that are relevant to me when I'm doing that search, and also giving me the ability to do more research on the web on that topic. So again, this idea of getting out of these silos and looking for the most relevant information no matter where it lives. Windows, Windows 10, uh, bringing these same capabilities and these same answers uh, to Windows 10. So you know, when, you're, when employees, when you're doing searches in there, um, or it's the most convenient place or searches they're already doing there, it's another entry point to be able to find the same kind of relevant information across your organization. Um, this is a pretty big one. So the customers that I work with, you know, it was, um, it was pretty amazing. So when my team ran the private preview for, um, the, for what's now Microsoft Search and Bing, and I will tell you that you know, the, the, we engage very closely with, uh, with you know, a good number of, of enterprise customers. And what we kept hearing from them was, you know, we, 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 had, share, we had like file search, we had people search, um, you, know, you could search SharePoint, OneDrive, um, bookmarks and so on. And we kept hearing Teams and Yammer and Teams and Yammer and Teams and Yammer. And it, it really honestly wasn't on our roadmap. And it was based on that feedback we kept hearing from customers that we said, okay, we're gonna reprioritize some stuff. And we brought in Teams conversations and Yammer conversations. And now in the next few months, those capabilities will also be, um, be served up in the search results for uh, in SharePoint, in office.com, and in the office web apps. Same with groups, uh, same with bookmarks and buildings. So a lot of the, these are basically all um, uh, capabilities that first surfaced in Bing Microsoft Search and Bing, and are now an example of them coming over to some of the other entry points to deliver on that one query across, you know, across your enterprise. Search admin portal. So for those, uh, I know there's at least a few of you in the room who are um, on the public preview of Microsoft Search in Bing, and also, um, also use SharePoint Search. And right now, there's two different admin portals for you to manage those. Um, if you create bookmarks in, in, um, in SharePoint, uh, you can kind of export them and then import them into Microsoft Search and Bing. But it really is, you know, it's, it's no fun and not very efficient to have those two. So we're, 
basically creating one um, admin portal for Microsoft Search, uh, where you'll be able to do all your search um, um, configuration and administration from one central portal. It'll have analytics. It'll allow you to do things like bookmarks and best bets, create Q&As and so on, and then so that those can then appear everywhere throughout, um, you know, throughout Microsoft Search. Um, a couple of the you know, capabilities we're really investing in, you should see some of these light up um, in some ways in the next few months, is people search. It's a, um, uh, the ability to search not just for people by their names or their you know, first name or last name, but also by their roles or by um, the profiles they've created, by what they do, uh, and to sort of look for people in that way. Um, as you know, in addition to be able to searching for people by name, and then a little further down the road, um, you know, we, we call that kind of expert search or subject matter expert search. Um, one of the things that will be coming a little bit further down the road is not just relying on profiles that you created as a user, like a Delve profile, for example, um, but actually inferring from the work you do, the presentations you work you work on, the um, the meetings that you're in areas inferring, learning what your expertise is uh, so that there would be less reliance on you having to update your profile and um, you know, it would be more based on your actual behavior. Um, and then the last thing is just continuing to make the search results more relevant uh, by mining more signals from the Microsoft Graph as well as bringing more technology over from our uh, Bing web search including um, we call it semantic matching. And this is a pretty interesting, uh, this is a pretty interesting technology where um, the, basically the, the, through machine reading comprehension, uh, we're able to actually understand the meaning of words on the page and sentences and the context that it's in. So going well beyond keyword matching. And so the ability to basically type in a, a query or a question like, can I bring my dog to work? And it can then essentially search over huge numbers of documents and extract the actual answer and display the, the one or two sentences um, that will answer that. And we've actually, and we're using this internally in Microsoft, and can I bring my dog to work actually is something uh, that, uh, that, that works that way. And it's not something that was curated, like uh, you know, the Q&As and bookmarks that we showed are curated. Um, by a, an editor or by an admin. This is having technology essentially, uh, essentially do that work. And then a little bit further down the road are some other big areas of, um, of, of investment that we'll, we'll be bringing out. One of them is extensibility. Um, who here use, uses uh, SharePoint like the, the search center and has customized search for your organization's research center? Yeah, so you know, a decent number. Um, you know, one of the things about that is that you have, you know, through Search Center, you have some tools to do some customization in terms of creating, um, you know, in terms of the UX, in terms of, you know, uh, you know providing some uh, influence on the ranking of results and so on. And so um, right now with Microsoft Search and, and modern Search as it was before with SharePoint, um, those, uh, those tools don't exist, basically. There's not much you can do in order to customize it. Uh, we're working on bringing some of those. Uh, the first ones that you should see show up are the ability to create uh, verticals, uh, custom verticals, custom scopes, um, as well as adaptive people, uh, adaptive cards, so that you can extend the information that's in the card. For example, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted the, you know, if Karen's people card uh, needed to show their, her employee number or her department number, if that was really important for employees to see, you know, enabling those kinds of capabilities. Um, uh, to have a little more control over that. Answers and insights. Um, this is a, a big one, as I've probably said five or ten times, that you know, going beyond links uh, to actually providing you answers uh, to the questions that you have or the information you're looking for. Um, one of those, for those of you who were in the Excel presentation yesterday, you actually demoed that where you, know, you can create in Excel, create a, um, a, a, a table essentially, and call one of the rows like stock prices and identify that as a data type. And, it'll, and then you enter you know, a few company names and you know, it'll basically, uh, Excel will then like tap into Bing's knowledge base and pull and understand what those companies are. It will pull in their stock prices and just automatically populate the table for you. No need for cutting and pasting. 
you know, it, and that is the power of the knowledge of the, the knowledge graph uh, that we have through Bing. <coughs> Floor plans, I showed that to you earlier. It will be coming uh, available more broadly. The ability to uh, extract acronyms and topics, and so kind of doing away with the need to have an acronym, you know, maintain an acronym list that, you know, that is out of date um, very, very quickly, but actually for the system to learn uh, what acronyms mean so that anyone could type one and actually get a definition and, and more information around that acronym so they don't feel completely, um, uh, you know, uh, out of the, like, out of the loop when people are talking in words that they don't understand. Uh, and then finally, the automated Q&A, which I had uh, referred to uh, through the machine rating comprehension technology, where the ability to just extract an answer to a question um, by, by truly understanding the semantic meaning of words and sentences on a page. And um, leaving the, the last but definitely not least is connectors, um, which will uh, enable searching across, you know, outside of Microsoft 365. Um, the, 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 our strategy there really is twofold. One is um, Microsoft will develop a small number of kind of out-of-the-box connectors, um, you know, and, and we're working on that list that we haven't, we haven't um, announced what that list is, and, you know, it's still being, I think, worked on to, to actually finally settle it. But there'll be a few, you know, some number of these, um, that will come, uh, will build, that will be available out of the box. And then we'll also be publishing an API uh, that, you know, that um, partners that who kind of make their business building connectors or any organization, any company could build their own connectors and, um, you know, ingest that information into, um, basically into the, uh, the graph. And so it actually gets the benefit then of being part of the Microsoft graph through all the per and all the personalization and connections that come with that. Um, and I think that is my second to last slide. Um, so, you know, what can I do now? You're sitting in this audit, what can you do now? Well, there's two things you can do. One is you can join the Microsoft Search and Bing public preview for your organization. Again, it's just a matter of flipping the switch over I do want to call attention to that the, it's a, currently it's available to tenants that are located in these markets. So the tenant itself has to be registered in that market. Users can be anywhere, um, but the tenants have to be in that market. And some of the, some of the um, intelligence capabilities that I, uh, I talked about, and, uh, you know, in terms of intent, understanding, and so on, they're not available right now in all these markets. We're working to bring them there. Um, you know, most of them are, are available in, I believe, the English, definitely in the English-speaking markets, and I believe France and Germany will be the next ones to light up, but they will be coming to, you know, the top markets. Um, but just if you're turning on the preview and you're like, hey, all this stuff that Karen showed me and I didn't really understand some of this stuff, um, that's because we're working on bringing that tech over. So that's number one. You can just um, go flip the switch, make it available to your users, create some bookmarks. Um, uh, look at the analytics, see what, um, you know, see what your users think. And then number two is to join the Microsoft Search tech community. And that's where um, it's a, probably the best way to be able to ask questions, to interact with other people who are using the product, to get answers from us, to get, you know, to see announcements of, you know, in addition to like big announcements through the Office 365 Message Center, um, to see, you know, posts and information and, and online events that we'll be doing that are more related to uh, to Microsoft Search. So with that said, we have 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Paul, oh, can I add a third option to that last slide? Sure. Everybody who is like really into this for your organization, join the Bing Insider program. Uh, the Bing Insider program will let you use, uh, beyond the public review, the next version of what Bing has to offer. And it also proposes, there's a monthly talk uh, unfortunately uh, for you guys, it's on Friday night and it's very late, but it's a monthly talk where you can actually talk to the PMs in Bing. I think you guys participate in that mm -hmm. every now and then as well, um, about the next version of Bing. It is the Bing Insider program. Uh, just Google Bing Insiders or Bing Bing Insiders if you prefer. And um, <laughs> sign up for it. It's free. It's available. Yeah. And um, it's great. Awesome. Great. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I Questions. 
Yep. Uh, one being, uh, when I travel, I'm online most of the time. And I found that uh, right now, Outlook, where it used to find everything I needed, uh, tends not to find anything anymore unless you're online. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, um, he's found that when he's searching Outlook, when he's offline, it's, the search is not working, essentially. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but um, I can, if we can take a note, and um, maybe you can find me afterwards, and I can see then if we can track it down. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not familiar. There was a question over here. Uh -huh. Is it possible to create uh, extra filters to search for SharePoint metadata? Because now I have a lot of custom content types with metadata. Yeah. And in the current new search experience, it's not possible to uh, use filters. Right, you mean like refiners and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the question is, um, I've created a lot of refiners and custom filters in the classic SharePoint search experience. Can I do these for this? So the answer is not now, but yeah, those, those, those kind of custom scopes and refiners are one of the first things that we're working on to bring into, I don't have a time frame to give you exactly, but it's, it's, it's we hear, we hear the, the need, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if you want to profit from the uh, further elaboration uh, in the direction of semantics, uh, isn't there a big uh, language dependency? Because, for example, in the Netherlands, you still haven't got the Dutch language in the Microsoft context. So, uh, can you tell something about the relation between going to semantics and dependency on language? Yeah, so the question is uh, going to semantics and the dependency on language, and uh, in particular, that a lot of Microsoft capabilities aren't for, some aren't, aren't like kind of optimized for the Dutch language. So yeah, I mean that, yes, the, you know, semantic understanding definitely does require an understanding, you know, um, of that language. I'm personally not uh, an extra expert in semantics, but I, again, I'm happy to chat with you afterwards. Um, I would assume that, yeah, it would, um, it'd be harder to to do that, deliver that, you know, if it was a language that the, the model wasn't trained to really understand. Um, and I, I understand, I know, I wish it was available everywhere, and I understand, I totally understand that being in uh, the Netherlands, sometimes things come a little bit later than, than everyone would like. Any other questions? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, we're looking for a sort of people finder. Uh, but in relationship to uh, a person's membership to uh, a team. That's something that's important. So I think the question is, you know, I want to be able to search for people who are part of a certain team, like a, like a team's team or, a, or an organization in your org. I want to see uh, who, was, oh, who was also uh, a member of this team. Yeah. So, there's something you can do now, which isn't exactly, uh, which is groups, because you can do group search. So if they're a member of a group, you can then search for that group and look, you can click in and then see who all the members of that group are. Um, currently, at least through Microsoft Search, uh, I don't think you can actually query, say, you know, people who are in X, you know, X team, but um, that's good. I mean, we, we hear a lot of, requests for, you know, people who are in a certain organization or, you know, people who work with this company uh, or have an expertise in a certain area. But I, um, I'll make sure we get that back to the product team because I, that's, um, I, I could definitely see the value of that. Uh, question here. Um, what are the implications for SharePoint cloud, cloud hybrid search? So when you want to surface um, yep. search results from your internal content? Yeah, so the question is, um, if we have a hybrid, SharePoint hybrid, uh, what are the implications there? So if you have SharePoint hybrid, you can sync up the index to the cloud, and therefore, yeah, so Microsoft Search will work. Uh, it will surface all the you know, content and documents and so on, as long as you have the, the index synced. Okay. Yeah. So you, still, you still require the, um, the on-premise SharePoint business, not going to be a connect directly I think you, yeah, I think you still require, yeah, yeah. Um, any other, oh. Image search, where are the images? Uh, question is, where's image search? Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, requests for image search and also video search through stream. Um, 
both definitely on the roadmap. Um, I don't know of an exact date. Anyone else? Going, going. Okay. Well, thanks everyone uh, for joining us, and uh, I hope it was helpful. And we'll be around for a little bit if you want to come up and ask any other questions. Thank you. Thank you.